Time now for some business news, and Sharon Gaffney joins us again. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Monty. I understand you're starting us off with a row, uh, simmering row between Hungary and Russia and Ukraine over this gas deal. Yes, and Kiev is calling on the U.S. and Germany to impose sanctions on Russia's Gazprom, accusing it of using energy as a weapon. It comes after the company implemented a transit deal with Hungary that deprives Kiev of revenue and gas supplies. Under the agreement, Gazprom is now transporting gas to Hungary and Croatia via the Turk Stream pipeline. Moscow is insisting that it's fulfilling all of its obligations. Meanwhile, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban is also dismissing Ukrainian concerns, saying that he's only accountable to his own voters. The main point is that unfortunately we can't take the Ukrainian perspective into consideration. I respect Ukraine. I wish good luck to the Ukrainian people. But concerning the issue with gas, we have to adjust not to the Ukrainian people, but to the interests of Hungarians. Here in France, there's relief for squeezed bill payers as the government seeks to relieve the pressure of soaring energy costs and a global gas crunch. It's limiting to 4% electricity price increases that were due to kick in next February. It's also blocking any further gas price hikes until April. James Vecina has more. An urgent measure for critical times. As gas prices in France soared by over 12% this Friday, the French government promised to postpone further increases until April. This means that consumers won't feel the impact of further planned rises over the winter, as they'll now be covered by the government. A move that's been met with mixed feelings. In the short term, it's a good decision, but we'll have to see what the markets are like at the beginning of next year. Freezing the prices for a few months is good, but if it's for them to go up later, then I don't see the point. Unless people will be earning more, they're still going to have to pay for the rise. So it's useless. And electricity prices are also set to climb. The oven is what costs me the most in terms of electricity expenses. They were due to go up by 12% in February. But by lowering taxes on electricity, the rise is set at 4% instead. A relief for Rémi Amaro. His electricity bill will cost him €2,245 a month. It's a 100 euro increase for me. It's substantial, but it won't affect our prices. If it had been 12 percent, then the bill would have gone up by three to 400 euros, and we would have had to consider putting our prices up. This consumers' association welcomes the move, but says that more could still be done. The state will benefit from the increase because of the taxes. This means they do have room for manoeuvre. Therefore, I believe they should have gone a step further and lowered taxes on gas too. The group is also calling for a complete review of energy price systems in France. Rising energy prices are accounting for much of the increase as eurozone inflation hits a 13-year high. Data from the EU's statistics agency shows that prices rose last month by more than 3% compared to the same period last year. It's the biggest jump in inflation since 2008 and well beyond the ECB target of 2%. American pharma group Merck says it's seeking authorization for a COVID antiviral pill it says halves the risk of hospitalization and death. A late stage trial of the drug showed consistent efficacy across multiple COVID variants. If given the green light by US regulators, the pill, which would be the first treatment of its kind, would be prescribed for five days to patients recently diagnosed with the virus. Merck said its results were so positive that outside monitors had asked to halt the trial early. Time now to take a quick look at the markets. Well, Mer Merck's share price is up 10% on the back of those clinical trial results. US stocks more generally were mostly higher on Friday, led by energy companies closing out what's been one of the worst weeks for financial markets in months. The Dow Jones, S&P 500 and Nasdaq are all up. Meanwhile, European stocks slumped to their lowest level in two months on the back of those rising inflation figures. In London, the FTSE 100 closed down by almost 1%. A slight fall too for the CAC 40 here in Paris, 
while the Frankfurt DAX was also lower. The European Commission says Australia isn't being punished for sinking a multi-billion euro contract for French submarines. A round of free trade talks between the EU and Canberra has been postponed in the wake of the row. The Australian Prime Minister abruptly cancelled a contract for 12 French submarines last month in favour of a deal with the United States and the UK. At the time, Paris said it could no longer trust the Australian government and questioned whether the trade agreement could still go ahead. The dispute has also prompted criticism from Brussels, but a spokesperson for the European Commission says the decision to delay the talks had nothing to do with the controversy. Look, the EU is not in the business of punishing anybody. Um, uh, Australia is uh, uh, a partner of the European Union. We have a trade negotiation ongoing. Trade negotiations, as everybody knows, are uh, very, very specific beasts. Uh, as Miriam has said, uh, the substance of the negotiation is uh, one that uh, definitely requires a lot more uh, effort and therefore um, it is not unusual that, uh, that uh, such uh, decisions are taken. Finally for now, Paris is one of the best places to do business. That's according to a new survey of more than 12,000 finance professionals around the world. The French capital has been ranked as the 10th most attractive finance hub ahead of cities like Frankfurt and Amsterdam. The survey rates locations according to several factors, including their tax system, regulations, infrastructure, workforce and legal environment. New York, London and Hong Kong took the top three spots. Good news for Paris. Good news for Paris. Congrats to the French capital. Thanks a lot, Sharon. That's it for now. Stay tuned for more world news here on France 24.